Okay, I wanted to give a little update of what I've been using the tractor with for the most part. Uh, last week, let me zoom in real quick. There is the building pad where our carport is going to go. That I did pretty much last weekend when we had our freezing weather. And I spent probably about four hours doing that. I have about 16 hours on the tractor right now. Total, about two of those hours was before we got it. So it was like the dealer and the manufacturer doing their stuff. So the other 10 hours, I've been doing this, which is a trench that is about 400 feet long. And I've never used a backhoe before. So it, there you can see a little bit of drunkenness going on where it's waving back and forth a little bit. But for the most part, it's straight. And this is phase one where it's going to be uh, a trench that's about 12 inches deep. Uh, the bucket width is 12 inches wide, so it's about uh, a foot uh, when you cut it in section, you know, 12 inches wide, 12 inches deep. Then what we're going to do is after that, we got a box blade. And it was recommended by the dealer to put the box blade on and then we can be able to cut on both sides. Uh, you, you literally stick the tractor down in the trench and the box blade will conform to that angle. And so you, we should have a nice angle going on both sides here. And then we have our little swell. Uh, the sisters are enjoying life right now uh, Hermione is always on the roost over there then you have um, we got two others looks like Samantha and maybe Pamela but anyway this is not a chicken video so this took about 10 hours to do I would say the first two hours was me just Wow, it's a nice flock of birds right there. And, um, all right, so we'll look at the birds real quick while I'm yakking. So the first couple hours I was spent pretty much learning how to use the tractor, how to use the backhoe. So I, I would say the first two hours I got a total of maybe 30, maybe 35 feet done. Then after that I started getting familiar with everything and so we got these little piles all over the place each of these piles represents about an hour's worth of work and so what I could do I could end up doing about 50 feet in an hour of trench now that was the backhoe and that was also moving the dirt was also in that time frame uh, we've put dirt in, let me zoom in, there's Andrea's mother's uh, septic tank. Uh, due to a couple of reasons last year, uh, nothing would grow on top of it and uh, it would keep eroding away. And so the, you could actually see the top of the septic tank. So I put about six inches of dirt on top of there. And then over on our septic tank, oh, let me zoom in, there we go. Oh, it's been settling, so it's been uneven. Ours would have stuff grow on top of it. All right, camera. But it would be uneven. So I've been dumping some dirt on top of those two. Then um, the main reason why we got the dirt in the fence area is... On the outside of the chicken coop, we want to put dirt around, and on the inside of the chicken coop in the run area, we want to put dirt in there. So in the event that this doesn't work, or if it gets overwhelmed, then hopefully the chicken coop won't get flooded like it has been doing uh, when we get our little monsoons. 
Uh, the whole reason for doing this is because this is flat here, but there still is a little bit of a slope. So sand is really good at absorbing water, but once it gets super saturated, it's like anything else. It stays on the surface and it starts moving. So the water would end after it gets super saturated, would get up and then start shedding down this way. It would go across the chicken coop, across our drain field, over near where Andrea's mother's house is, and then work its way down to the corner over there. And so this trench and swale system hopefully is going to take care of that problem. So the next time we get a monsoon, then hopefully it will go down into this system and stay away and keep our area from being flooded. Now, right here is, um, this is an attempt is, at making an area where we can go back and forth um, until I can get the swale part done uh, with the box scraper. And so I did try to go across with the tractor uh, without doing any of this and I got stuck but I was able to put it into four-wheel drive and uh, get out so then this is an attempt to um, be able to get to the back side if I need to without having to go all the way around to the end of the property all right the birds are still up there because I can hear them up oh, here's another bunch right there and so they oh there's another bunch so it looks like a bunch of blackbirds they're definitely not crows because they're definitely not big enough but I don't know if they're migrating I don't know if they're just trying to find food I don't know what they're doing but we do have trees around so it looks like they're all going all right so with the bird distraction out of the way so what we want to do is we want to take the trench all the way down which I've done which hold on a second let me go down there all right so I'm down here at the end here's the end of the trench right here and so now you can see it go in the other direction it's from the bottom of the trench up at the top to the top of the dirt here is about 15 inches lower and then this is about a foot down from there so it's more than two feet lower from the top of the trench down to here and so but what we want to do is after we get done with that after we get done with our planting and everything I want to take turn it and take it this way over to the corner because the lowest spot of the property is over in the corner over here. So let me get over to there real quick. All right, so we're over in the corner now. So let me pan around. There's the end of the trench there. There's the fence, there's the guys, there's the house and everything. And so when, it, when we have the monsoons, all the rain ends up coming down, sheds over, and goes over into this area. Then it ponds up over here, and then this spot right here is the lowest, and then it will breach over here, and then go out that way towards the road, because the grade goes down from there in the trees. So what we want to do is ink, take that swale, move it down over to here, and then I want to lower this because the grade goes starts going down significantly. So even if I lower it by six inches or so, when it starts ponding up, it'll only pond up so far. Then it will go over and uh, shed out where it normally does in the monsoon area. Because what happened was is a good bit of this was underwater. And because it was so high in order to um, spill over over there, this stayed for several days over here. And it probably at least a foot deep 
especially in the corner over here. So what I want to do is hopefully, if it gets to that point, to be able to shed it out and have a little bit of water here, but not have it to where it was going to be just bukus and bukus and bukus of water. And so that's the game plan at least. Unfortunately, what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to get it done and then we're going to have to wait for a monsoon to happen. We had about a half a dozen of them last year because what happened was is that it would rain several, several times each time the ground would get more saturated and then it would not take that much and then it would uh, start flooding at that point. There's Lady Pants and... So the idea is, or as my stepmother would say, the idea is to hopefully get the water to go into a certain area before it starts flooding. And then uh, we can be able to control it. So uh, I know if you're looking over here, I still do not have the chicken tractor done yet. Um, when I got the tractor, the... the real tractor uh, the chicken tractor got put on back burner so anyway that's all i wanted so just want to give everybody an update